Hey everybody, welcome to What A Week with John Keller. Krista McKinnon here checking in with you. And it's been, we can really say, yeah. this has already been oh, yeah. a week. All right, the Mueller report yeah. drops. We get uh, Attorney General Barr's kind of synopsis, this four-page summary. What are your thoughts on kind of where this all played out? Well, just before we sat down to record this, Chris, the New York Times reported the report is over 300 pages long. Uh, so just, you know, call me silly. But I'm just guessing there might be more substance that the public will want to know about in mm -hmm. there than what Attorney General Barr summarized in his four-page summary there. Right. So, look, the pressure is going to keep up from Democrats and others uh, to see the whole report and see what's in there, the underlying evidence and so forth. And uh, I, I don't see how they're going to keep it quiet. Uh, I, I, I think they clearly prefer to. Uh, but I don't see how that's going to happen. And the most interesting wrinkle, a spate of public polls shows that nobody's mind was really changed by what Barr put out and that uh, significant numbers of Americans, a majority, want to see this report for themselves. So I think that's probably the next shoe to drop here. All right. Well, wait and see when that hope hopefully all gets made public, because I think as journalists, too, we want to see it. We paid for it. We want to see it, whatever it shows. Uh, you know, I would think if it's exculpatory and vindicates the president and the White House, I would think they would be the first ones to want it out. Want it out. All right, next topic, number two. We are talking about uh, ACA. The president and yeah. his administration have decided they don't want to defend this anymore. They kind of want to just get rid of Obamacare, as it's commonly known. Uh, but some Republicans are saying, well, what's the plan, right? right. This was the problem the first time around, if you recall. At least back then, you know, Paul Ryan, then the House Speaker, he had a plan. Uh, there were others. Uh, some were proposing, you know, block granting funds to the states, putting a cap on it. You hear, you, you figure it out. Yep. So there were some ideas floating around. None of them passed muster in the end. And here we are two years later, and, uh, you know, I'm not aware of a specific plan that anyone is pointing to. And the bottom line is, uh, there's almost nothing the Republicans could do that would make it through the Democratic-controlled House. Mm -hmm. So why are we even doing this? I mean, apparently the White House sees the opportunity to achieve through the courts what they couldn't achieve legislatively, which is to gut Obamacare. Okay, you hate Obamacare, you think it's evil and sinister, you want to end it. Okay, fine, but you've got 20 million people who are going to be without health care. Yeah. And you've got states like Massachusetts that rely heavily on the enhanced Medicaid funding, right. which is a key part of the Obamacare formula. What happens to us and our economy if this goes through? A lot of questions, very few answers, Chris. All right, sounds good. And then the last thing we want to talk about back here at home, we're speeding through the topics this week. Did you yeah. notice that? We've been told to shorten it up a little bit. The 14 <laughs> cups of coffee beforehand <laughs> yeah. really helped. Yeah. Exactly. Um, MBTA stations, the MBTA is spending millions of dollars on cleaning up some of the most busy stations in our subway. Uh, a, thoughts on this, but B, are you going to miss the underground smell of Boston in some of these stations? <laughs> Uh, no. No, I will not. No, I'm not big on that type of smell. Yeah. And uh, what's happening here is pretty clear. People are getting impatient, yeah. understandably so. The Baker administration, uh, their game plan has been to invest at, uh, in the long-term improvement of the system. New cars, new infrastructure, fixing the switches. Yep. And a lot of that stuff just hasn't been visible yet. Right. We just heard the other day the new Orange Line cars have been delayed once again. They're mm -hmm. now talking about sometime this summer. And in the meantime, the service is sketchy, to say the least. And people who are forced to use it every day are frustrated, understandably so. This, in turn, is fueling more political pressure for tax hikes to help fund transportation improvements and other needs. And I think the Baker administration is reacting to that pressure by saying, look, you know, we think they'll be happy once they see everything that's coming down the road. But in the meantime, we've got to slap a fresh coat of paint on this pig and, and calm people's nerves a little bit. I think that's what's going on. I think it does make a little bit of sense, too, because some of the stations really are in dire need. Oh, you know, they it could use look, it. Yeah. It's not like this is unnecessary. Right. 
But, uh, you know, just slapping lipstick on a pig doesn't mean it's not still a pig. That's very true. All right, John Keller, thank you so much for joining us. What a week. Thanks for checking in with us, and we'll see you next time. And I'm sure we're going to have a ton to talk about next week, right? Have a great weekend. Rest up. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. All right, take care. <laughs>